Hi everybody, welcome to Sea Life Sydney Aquarium. My name is Emily and I am one of the senior aquarists here that looks after all of the species of shark. So one of those species I wanna to talk to you today is one of my favorites, and that is the gray nurse shark. So you'll be able to see them swimming around behind me. They're the really large kind of dark grayish colored ones. And they're quite big, they're about three meters in length. And what I wanted to talk to you about today is their life cycle. So how they go off and have baby sharks. So baby sharks are called pups. So not like puppies, not like a dog, but pups. Um, and these guys have a really interesting way of breeding. So you might be able to see as they swim behind me that sharks don't have any hands. So how the female will actually get pregnant is the male will swim alongside her and using his beautiful sharp teeth, he will bite onto her fin um, and then he has two reproductive organs and they are called claspers. So what he'll do is he'll actually contort himself underneath her um, and impregnate her that way. Now you might be thinking, oh, doesn't that hurt the female? Like, doesn't it leave scarring on her body? Doesn't it get, cause her pain? And the answer is it does a little bit. However, female shark skin is about eight times thicker than a male skin. So the likelihood is that she doesn't really feel it and it's more of an annoyance to her than anything. Now these scars heal really, really well and all the little cuts and stuff after breeding season is finished, they'll basically heal over and leave a little bit of a um, pattern on the skin, kind of showing where it had been. Um, but it doesn't cause them any long-term harm. Now, once the female is pregnant and the eggs inside her have been fertilized, uh, the female shark actually has two uteruses. So human females have one, um, that's where they grow their babies. Uh, female sharks, especially this species, they have two. So what will happen is all those fertilized eggs in each uterus, one of them will develop quicker than all the others. So once that happens, once that baby gets big enough and it grows a, a little set of teeth, it'll actually go around and eat all of its brothers and sisters and all the other remaining unfertilized eggs. Now this has a really cool name. This is called interuterine cannibalism, which basically is a big fancy term for saying it eats all its brothers and sisters. So cannibalism is eating of the same species and interuterine means it happens within the uterus. So big fancy words, big scary word, very easily explained. So what will happen is as that baby continues to grow, there might be one pup in each uterus. It'll eat all the eggs that the mother will keep producing. So her body just does that naturally, even if they're not going to be fertilized. And normally she would shed them, but the baby would actually go around and eat all of those eggs. And this is really big, good because this is a really good source of uh, nutrition and food for that baby. So it means it'll grow nice and strong. So after about 12 to 15 months, which is a really long time, um, the mother will actually give birth to maximum of two pups. Usually it's only one, but the maximum number of pups she can have is two. So even after over a year, she can only have a maximum of two babies. So this only happens every two years as well. So this is the reason this species in particular, you'll be able to see Miss Mary Lou. She's about to swim past me. She's one of our big females. This species is actually considered to be critically endangered along the east coast of Australia. So around Sydney and around Queensland, all that area. And this is actually because they were almost hunted to extinction in the 1950s and 1960s because people thought they were man eaters. Now, in reality today, we do know that they are totally harmless, um, but unfortunately, it's actually taken this species a really long time to recover because their life cycle is so slow. So after the babies are born, it takes them anywhere from eight to 13 years to become adults themselves and go off and have their own young. So as you can imagine, if you're wiping out almost the whole population, it'll take them a really long time to recover. Now, I want to thank you guys for joining me here today. You can see Miss Big Mouth above my head as well. She's another really cool species that you might be able to learn about. Um, thanks for sticking with me. I know that there was a lot of information to absorb. And if you do have any questions, either ask your teachers, do a little bit of your own research, or come down and see us at the aquarium.